Welcome back to Fast Freddy RC, and as you can see, here is my original Tamiya King Cab. Uh, and you can see that I still have some tread left on the tires. I did get some road tires because I didn't want to wear them out completely in the hopes I would still have some tread for the dirt. But for the most part, I've pretty much decided to retire this one uh, just because, you know, it's been 30 years and the parts I'm sure are pretty brittle and everything on this is original. So I kind of want to keep it that way. So I'm going to clean it up and it's probably going to end up being a shelf queen for from now on. Um, but I thought I would take you through something. I found a little while ago my original Tamiya King Cab manual. And I just think it's so cool when I browse through this earlier. So I thought I'd show you it. So, you know, this this still has like the original coloring of the blue as well, because most manuals from Tamiya are just uh, black and white. So here we go, step one. Looks like we're building the steering linkage and we're also putting in the stabilizer bar. And then in step two, we're putting on those front arms and getting it ready to install into the onto the chassis. And then three, that's exactly what we're doing. And of course, this bathtub is upside down. Um, we're going to attach this to the chassis. In four, we're making two, which are going to be steering linkage arms. And you can see that in step five, we're completing the uh, stabilizer connectors, uh, getting those attached to the arms. So that's step five. Then in step six, we're going to uh, put some more arms together, uh, probably the uh, suspension linkage. And then in seven, these are pieces that are gonna fit onto the back side. And again, you've got the linkage pieces we just made in step six. And then in eight, Yep, we're just attaching those now, um, which are going to be on the front there and then the piece at the back there. And then in step nine, we're putting together those front arms uh, and, and the front axles. And in 10, we're starting to attach all of the linkages and, and get those uh, arms and suspension in place. Uh, and you can see it's it's there as well. And moving on to step 11, looks like we're putting on the graphite plate. And that is, it was a graphite plate, uh, which was interesting with this car. And then in 12, we're attaching the rear arms as well onto that graphite plate. And in 13, we're starting to put together uh, parts of the gearbox housing. And then in 14, we're building the differential. And in the king cab, the differential was a ball differential. So that was unique at the time for me. I think it was the first ball differential I'd ever made. Then in step 15, we're fixing up the other side of that ball differential and putting it together. And then in 16, we're putting together some of the counter gears, uh, the, getting the bearings and the drive ship, um, joints in place as well. In 17, we're putting it all together getting that ball diff into the gear housing. And then in 18, we're attaching the motor to all of this. And then in 19, we're starting to put the other gears in place and get the other side of the gearbox attached. And looks like we're also getting the pinion all attached properly as well. Interesting design. And then in 20, we're attaching that gearbox to the graphite plate. In 21, we're putting together some more linkages. And then in 22, we're putting all the pieces together uh, or attaching all the pieces to the chassis that are gonna be needed to attach some of that uh, rear suspension stuff as well. And then in 23, we're actually attaching that whole graphite piece with the motor, gearbox, etc., to the chassis. And then in 24, uh, we're starting to put on the upper uprights, uh, which will also be the body mounts. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. And then for 25, we're putting together the rear axle hubs uh, and getting that all set up. And then in 26, same thing. Looks like we're getting those uh, drive joints in place, etc. Uh, and of course, that's the next step. So it's the other side. 
And then in 27, uh, we're putting together the shocks. And these were oil-filled shocks, and they were long. Like, this had a lot of suspension travel. So there we go. We're going to put in the oil, uh, get the springs all set up for 29. And then in 30, we're attaching uh, the front shocks to the chassis. Uh, 31, we're working on the rear dampers now. And then in 32, we're insta installing those rear dampers. And of course now, you know, Beck was a kind of a new thing back then, the battery eliminator circuitry. So you didn't have to have that uh, pack of four AAs in the, in the car, uh, reduced weight. So they start talking a bit more about that. And then in 33, we're starting to um, get all of the RC equipment ready. And it's interesting, you see the four, you know, the two stick system. Of course, most manuals now um, have the, the wheel radio control, but this was the thing back in the day. Uh, there wasn't too many of the others at this point. So then we're getting the servos all ready. And, and then in 34, we're installing one of the servos. And which one is the speed, speed control servo? So this is for the mechanical speed control. So uh, that's that one. And then in 35, they're showing you how to put together the uh, mechanical speed controller, the three speed uh, speed controller. And then in 36, we're installing that and getting the arm ready to, and attached to the servo. And of course, they want you to do some tests and whatnot with that. Of course, you've got the resistor too. Um, which was interesting back in the day. Everything's electronic now. Then in 37, there's a boot that you can put over the speed controller to keep out the dust and the grime, etc. I don't think I put that on mine, uh, to be honest. It's not in it now. So did I put it on 30 years ago? Cannot remember. Uh, 38, we're now going to install the steering servo. And of course, get it all set and ready and, and make sure the it's adjusted correctly. And then in 39, we're gonna put in that plate that we put the uh, speed controller servo and mechanical speed controller and attach that over top of um, what we just put in with the steering servo. So that plate, now it fits inside there. Then in 40, they're showing you what to do with the uh, cables and how to put those into the receiver. That's really interesting looking at this 30 years later. That's that's very cool. Um, and of course, they're showing you if you had the CPR unit, which isn't really that common now, um, or whether you installed an electronic speed controller, you had an option as well. Uh, most kits now will only show you the speed controller option, the CPR or the mechanical, they're out out the window uh, then in 41 they're showing you installing the battery getting that all set uh, which is interesting too because I I wouldn't do this normally because it's a bit early we haven't even built the car yet so why would you want the extra weight as you build it but hey that's how it was set up uh, then in 42 we're gonna put those front wheels into the tires in 43 we're gonna attach them uh, so that we've got them onto the chassis and then it looks like we're putting the rear wheels onto the chassis as well. Then in 44, we start working on the body. So this all had to be cut out uh, and attached. It's funny, I always thought it was a one piece thing. I, I didn't realize um, it was actually a, a, an extra piece that you attach to the truck after the fact. It showed you the paint job. I got to tell you, I am not 100% sure why I ended up going with a completely different color. I thought, I think I just didn't want to do it box art. It's actually turned out quite well. It was kind of like a neon yellow color um, and it does work well. But I think today, you know, 30 years later, I think I would have liked to have had it uh, box art. But I do not want to start messing about and cleaning it up and repainting it. Uh, so I, I'm going to, I'll leave it as is. So now in 46, they're showing you how to attach that extra piece. And of course it's showing you that it had to be painted as well. Remember this all had to be painted before we moved on to step 46. And then in 47, it's showing you all of the placement for the decals. 
And I have to admit, I really loved the decals and the placement of everything on this car. Um, I it looked it looked really cool. And of course, I painted the front end of that too. Um, but it just it looked it just looked really really good. And then in '48, it just shows you attaching the body and putting the pins in. And I believe that was the final step for this. Yes, we're just into their so their warnings and and tips and troubleshooting, etc. Um, so there we go. There is the manual for the uh, Tamiya King Cab. I just think it's so cool to to have found it. I didn't realize I still had it. Uh, so it's kind of cool to show you as well because I don't know if there's that many of these out there and it is my original one. Anyway, very cool. I'm glad I was able to find it. Glad I was able to show you. Uh, so please like, subscribe, let me know you uh, like what you see and we'll see you in another video.